John Fluvog, and I'm quarantined. So I'm a little bored and I thought, well, why don't I read a book? I thought, well, why don't I read a book to you? You might be a little bored yourself and feeling a little restless, don't know what to do. So one of the books I like reading is this one is by Roald Dahl. And it's kind of a kid's book. My grandkids like it. So I thought we'd have a go at it. Um, there's, I don't know how many chapters there are. 18, it says. But we'll get through one and we'll see where we go and see if any of you are still listening at the end of it. So it's called The Three Farmers and it's called The Fantastic Mr. Fox. So here we go. The Three Farmers is a chapter one. Down in the valley, there were three farms. The owners of these farms had done well. They were rich men, and they were also nasty men. All three of them were about as nasty and as mean as any you could meet. Their names were Farmer Bogus, Farmer Bounce, and Farmer Bean. I don't know if you can see the pictures there, but you can see they don't look good. They're looking nasty looking dudes. And I think they're up to no good. Let's find out. So Bogus was a chicken farmer. He kept thousands of chickens. He was enormously fat. This was because he ate three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings every day for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Well, we all know that's not good. And Bounce was a, deuce, a duck goose farmer. He kept thousands of ducks and geese. He was a kind of pot-bellied dwarf. He was so short, his chin would have been underwater in the shallow end of any swimming pool in the world. His food was donuts and goose livers. Ugh. He mashed the livers into a disgusting paste and then stuffed the paste into donuts. <laughs> oh man, this diet gave him a tummy ache and a beastly temper. You can see him, here's a picture of him, you want to have a look at him. Nasty, right? Oh, okay. Now, Mr. Bean was a turkey and apple farmer. He kept thousands of turkeys and in an orchard full of apple trees, he never ate any food at all. Instead, he drank gallons of strong cider, which he made from the apples in his orchard. He was thin as a pencil and the cleverest of them all. So, Bogus and Bounce and Bean, one fat, one short, one lean, those horrible crooks so different in looks, were none less equally mean. That's what all the children round about used to sing when they saw him. There you go. That's him right there. You can see that. So, we're on to the next page. Let's see what's going on here. The plot is thickening because these are bad guys. All right, wow. Mr. Fox, well, I'm actually on a second chapter, so we'll do two, two chapters. Mr. Fox, on a hill above the valley, there was a wood. And in the wood, there was a huge tree. And under the tree, there was a hole. I guess I better show you that, right? There we go. You can have a look at that. All right. Every evening, as soon as it got dark, Mr. Fox would say to Mrs. Fox, Well, my darling, what shall it be this time? A plump chicken from Bogus, or a duck or goose from Mr. Bounce, or a nice turkey from Mr. Bean. Oh, and when Mrs. Fox told him what she wanted, Mr. Fox would creep down into the valley in the darkness of night and help himself. Boy, boy. I can see why they're annoyed at him. Anyway, uh, Bogus and Bounce and Bean knew very well what was going on. And it made them wild with rage. They were not men who liked to be, to give in in any way. Less still did they like anything to be stolen from them. So every night, each of them would take his shotgun and hide in a dark place, somewhere on his own farm, hoping to catch the robber. But Mr. Fox was too clever for them. He always approached the farm with the wind blowing on his face. And this meant that if any man was lurking in the shadows ahead, the wind would carry the smell of that man to Mr. Fox's nose from very far away. Thus, if Mr. Bogus was hiding behind his chicken house, number one, Mr. Fox would smell him out off 50 yards and quickly change directions, heading for the chicken house, number four, at the other end of the farm. Dang, blast that lousy beast, cried Mr. Bogus. 
I'd like to rip his guts out, oh, said Bounce. And he must be killed, cried Bean. But how, said Bogus, how on earth can we catch the blighter? Oh, what a problem. Bean picked his nose delicately with his long finger and said, I have a plan, he said. Hmm. Bean, um, oh, you've never had a decent plan yet, said Bounce. Shut up and listen, said Bean. Tomorrow night, we'll all just hide outside the hole where the fox lives. And we'll wait until he comes out. Then, bang, 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 bang. Oh, very clever, said Bounce. But first, we shall have to find the hole. Ah, my dear Bounce, I've already found it, said the crafty bean. It's up in the wood on the hill. It's under a huge tree. What's going on here? Well, that's it. I've done two chapters. I think that's enough for now. So, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the little story of the fantastic Mr. Fox, and we will continue it. So, be back. Thanks.